It is a book written by over 40 authors, most who never met. Its passages originated over thousands of years and from different tongues. So how did this unlikely book of books, taking a common name from the Greek word biblos, meaning book, come to be? And how did it travel through a turbulent history to reach it? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so began the human experience. But we did not begin this journey alone or without direction. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will help you. For centuries, God's comforting assurances and acts of faithfulness were passed along as spoken stories, told diligently and often from one generation to the next. Cherished stories such as God's promise to Abraham and Sarah. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou wholehearted. I will establish my covenant between me and thee to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The written word began at Mount Sinai where God delivered to Moses Ten Commandments engraved on stone tablets, a foundation for our enduring relationship with God and each other. And the Lord spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, doing mercy unto thousands for those who love me and keep my ordinances. And so began the journey of the written word, whose footsteps became the heartbeats of our history. The spoken stories of God's faithfulness were now preserved and passed to future generations by scribes who carefully copied the accounts of Moses, the songs of David, and the call of prophets on scrolls, not to make it more susceptible to corruption, but to make it nearly impossible to alter and change. The statutes of the Lord are right. More to be desired are they than gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. In an obscure Galilean village, not just a new chapter, but a New Testament was added to this book of books. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Do not imagine that I come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to complete them. This good news that God's love and mercy are meant for all inspired apostles and evangelists to embark on long journeys that tested the limits of human endurance. They courageously carried this message of love and hope to distant lands, where history records it transformed hearts and nations. It inspired a millennium of monks to copy scripture, one book, one passage, one verse, one letter at a time in remote, dimly lit cloisters, driven by the conviction that if the Bible became lost, so would all hope for humankind. And it inspired thousands to give their very lives to keep faith alive. But despite all attempts to discredit or destroy scripture, this heartbeat of hope could not be silenced. Such 
was the magnificence of this book of books, that despite the threat and toll of sword and flame, somehow each new generation stood ready to pick up the baton. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The need to copy scripture by hand ended with the introduction of Gutenberg's movable type press, which vastly increased the number of people who could, and now did, read the Bible for themselves. Thy word is a candle unto my feet and a light unto my paths. Today, the footsteps of the Bible's journey echo across the entire world as unheralded translators travel to the ends of the earth to make the blessings of Scripture and therefore God's abiding love available to every creed and nation. Perhaps the greatest miracle of history is that the Book of Books has not only survived the passages of time, the ravage of fire, constant use, damp climates, and violent attempts at suppression over the past 2,000 years. It has thrived beyond human imagination. Remarkably, around 40,000 handwritten manuscripts of the Bible in ancient languages still exist. By contrast, only about 1,500 manuscripts of Homer's Iliad remain, the most copied classical work to survive antiquity. Today, the Bible has been translated into more than 2,400 languages, 30 times the number in which Shakespeare is available. To be or not to be. I am who I am. More than 8 billion Bibles have been distributed throughout the world, making it by far the best-selling book every year and of all time. And that doesn't include the digital versions of the book of books being used today by millions. The Bible is the most studied book in history. In the beginning was the Word. A book that analyzes God, as it is analyzed. God. A book that informs when read for the very first time or the 500th. Scripture has inspired the greatest art in human history, and its poetic passages provide words and images that daily shape our culture and communication. The Bible is the only book read in grass huts, majestic cathedrals, and from a spacecraft orbiting high over the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. They was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. The enduring promise of God's faithfulness gave pilgrims and pioneers the courage to make the perilous passage to this new world in search of religious freedom. And through peace, war, prosperity, and recession, the Book of Books has continued for millions, including many of our leaders, to be the primary source for inspiration and direction. In regards to this great book, the Bible, I have but to say it is the best gift God has given to man. All things most desirable for man's welfare, here and hereafter, are found portrayed in it. For those men and women who embrace its profound truths today, as throughout all of history, the Bible continues to inspire because it reveals the living word of a living God. 
because it solves the mystery of our past and gives meaning and purpose to our present. Because it lights the way to our future, not only in this life, but beyond. Because it comforts in times of mourning, frees us from oppression. And because it assures us daily and emphatically that we are loved by a merciful God who sent his only son, a man unlike any other, to walk the earth, to offer each person on this earth not a life free of all cares, but a life filled with caring and community, a life of everlasting peace, boundless joy, unquenchable hope. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. God, the creator of the universe, who spoke all things into existence, chose to speak to us through the spoken and written Word, a Word forever fixed in heaven, unchanging, and always, and in all ways, true. This everlasting word, this book of books, offers to any and all a life filled with grace and truth. But it is a gift from God that first requires one simple act. That you reach out and accept it.